Well, good morning, everybody. Well, it's good to see everybody. It's been two years since I've seen a lot of you guys, and I tell you, it's good to see you this morning. Hey, everybody look at your neighbor and give them a big old hello. Yeah, hello. How y'all doing? That looks good. Praise God. Now then, I got a few of you smiling. Anyway, hey, praise God. That's good. Well, welcome to Central Hatchie Homecoming. I'm looking forward to uh, being here today. Uh, uh, I just want to tell you, uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long two years uh, uh, since uh, we got together. Uh, of course, the first year was pre-COVID, but then everything, everything now is before COVID. Amen? Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, remind you uh, that if you don't have a church home, next Sunday morning is uh, Mother's Day. It'd be good to get with your mom and come to church and be here with us. Uh, get all dressed up. Hey, we're going to have a couple of places set up. You know, one of the things we fail to do is we fail to take family pictures like we used to. And we're going to set up a couple of places where you can have a family portraits done for next week. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, and uh, uh, so be here uh, and with your mom and, and have your pictures took with her, okay? Uh, it'll be a good time together. I'm not going to be any way, kind of long-winded, but uh, we've got the appointed quartet that's going to be here with us today. Uh, they've got a... a, a, a couple of songs they're going to sing for us, and then we're going to uh, turn Brother Scott loose. Uh, Just uh, let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for the day. Thank you for everything that you do for us. God, as we're here today celebrating uh, this day, remembering those who have gone on before us. I remember uh, in your word, God, where you said, uh, uh, because we are encompassed, where we, we've got all around us a great cloud of witnesses. Boy, we've had a, uh, uh, a group that went before us, God, that, that set the tone for how we're to live our life. Help us, God, uh, just as we remember today, to remember with fondness uh, the directions and the instructions of those that we love, that that went before us. Help us, Lord, today as appointed sings. Anoint them. Give them, uh, uh, Lord, your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Where is appointed? I lost appointed. Where are they at? There they are. Y'all go ahead and help yourself. You lost one, didn't you? There he is. Y'all got to watch out and in the gray suit. Amen. His mercies day by day He's gonna lead me all the way I'm going to heaven Going to heaven Some glad day Some happy day I'm on my way I'm on my way, way. way. Glory, glory, glory I made my choice I take my stand I'm a sinful way To a sinful way Going to heaven some glad day, some happy day. In heaven above there'll be no tears, no more sorrow, pain, or fear. Well, it will all be done when we step on the other shore. Lifting our voices to give him praise. Welcome home, my child, he'll say. Going to heaven some glad day, some happy day. I'm on my way, on my way, way to glory. Land. I made my day, my choice, I take my stand, my stand. I'm not turned back, I'm not turned back. To my sinful ways, to my sinful ways. I'm going to heaven, going to heaven some glad day, some happy day. Oh, I'm on
know what I was going to do. <laughs> We're going to sing an old song this morning. I, I love this song. What a day that will be. And you know, some songs don't need to be introduced. Just listen to the words of this song. One of these days, one of these days, we're going to see Jesus. Amen. Put all of our worries and all of our cares behind. Amen. There is coming a day. all time. Amen? I look forward to that day. I promise you I do. All right, at this time, Brother Scott Bailey's got a devotion for us. If you'll come on at this time, brother. It's good to see everybody at Central Hatchie this morning. And uh, as I walked around the old graveyard this morning, I seen how pretty the graves were fixed up and how nice everything looked out there and you could tell that there was some loved ones out there that was truly loved and, and truly missed and uh, that's the reason that you're here today and uh, uh, one plaque summed it up out there that I read as I walked around it says uh, not a day goes by you're not missed and you could say that this morning about your loved one friend and I could stand here and quote you all kind of verses this morning about the promises of God and the, the hope of heaven that we have. But bottom line is that the death of a loved one hurts. Amen. And it hurts bad. It hurts bad. When I heard of the death of Miss Isa Lee Doyle uh, Friday and had that old own up in age and lived a good life and 90 something years of age and I watched her. She sat right there all them years right there at that, that bench and and when it come to stand, most Baptists wouldn't even stand out of her seat. But Miss Isley, when she got ready to stand, it may take four or five folks to help her up. She may roll up under one of them pews, but she's coming up praising the Lord. Amen. That's right. And the death of her grieved my old heart. It grieved my heart this morning. And I remember him. 
after I got saved around 1998, Doug Bingham standing behind this pulpit right here. Hadn't been saved long. Didn't get saved after 36, but he preached a message and he came from 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 33. He talked about King David. King David was a man after God's own heart. He loved the Lord. King David loved Jesus. He loved the Lord. But King David, the news had come to him and he said that your son had died. Your son had died. And this is what is wrote right here. And the king was much moved and he went to the chamber over the gates and he wept. And he went thus and said, Oh, my son, my son Absalom, I wish I could have died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. You can hear the pain in old David's voice as he read them words right there. Old Doug preached that message right there. And no doubt if you're here today, you've lost a loved one in the last two years. Or there's somebody out here buried in this cemetery that you love. And I can tell you this morning, you've come to the right place. Amen! Amen. Ecclesiastes 7 says, it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that the end of man, of all man, and the living will lay it to heart. When you come to the house of, of the where somebody has died, it, it sets things in motion that, that you know there's something beyond this old life and you start searching for it. And there's no doubt you miss that loved one dearly that you love. And I found in my own life, if you choose to remember the good experiences you had with that loved one, It'll help you heal and it'll help you be blessed. In Philippians, the theme of the book of Philippians is the Christian experience and what happens to him. And there's one verse in there that says, Paul said, For I have learned that in whatever state I'm in, to be content. Mm -hmm. Be content. Mm -hmm. In my Bible, over the verses of Philippians 8, Philippians 4, chapter verses 8 through 9, is wrote, The presence of the peace of God. And these verses say, Family, brother, whatever things are good, true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things of a good report, think on these things. Think on these things, friend. And I have to apply that to my own life, friend. Old Zeke Bailey, he turned 16 years old. I had a, a 1987 silver rod that I really cherished, built the motor in, put dual exhaust on with some hush thrust on it now. <laughs> hush thrust mufflers. Old Zeke Bailey eyeballed that old truck, and he got earned 15 years old. He kept looking at it. Boy, he wanted that old truck bad. He turned 16. I kinda, he kind of took it over, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he drove it to school and back. He was a short little thing. He didn't hit his growth spurt till later on in life, but... I kind of let him have it, old truck. He come home one day and he said, Pop, he said, that thing sure would sound good with some old cherry bomb. I mean, know what a cherry bomb glass pack is. He said, Woo! Amen. He said, Pop, it sure would sound good. I said, well, I'll tell you what you do, son. You buy them. And we'll weld them on. I'm talking about the next day. He had the truck jacked up in the shop. Had two cherry bombs laid out there. I come in late and work all muddy. He said, I got them, Pop. And I said, well, hey, man, let's get at him. Stick them on. Boy, we took that old truck and jacked it up, and he held the old tailpipes just right, and I cut them old mufflers off, them old hush thrush, you know. I stuck them old cherry bombs on that thing. I told him, I said, ease in there and just fire it up and see what it sounds like. But I was watching old bear. That boy fired that truck up. He turned that old switch. Whoo! Y'all know what I'm talking about. That thing sounded good. I mean, it sounded so good I ordered some for Angie's equal now. <laughs> but listen to me. I said, Zeke, uh, he's down on that thing. Let's see what it sounds like when you get on it just a little bit. Wow! Boy, and that sounded good. He said, let's go down the road in it, Pop. So we loaded up that thing. It was about 9 o'clock at night. And he come off May Hill down here. And he was running 70 miles an hour. Barely could see the steering wheel. I was sitting over hunting my seat to buckle up with, friend. 
He come off that hill and he let off that thing. And you're talking about mufflers and motor that was made for one another. Boy, it was sweet. It was sweet. But there was a battle there between the muffler and the motor. You know what I'm saying? He liked to hear that thing talk. And by the time he graduated high school, he listened to me. The mufflers had won. The old truck was knocking. Amen. <laughs> but old Zeke's buried down here at the bottom of this hill. And to help me get over things like that, it just blesses my heart when I remember the good things that yeah. happen in life. And if you're here today, friend, I pray today that you think of the good things of your loved one, friend. Good things that happen. I was talking to the Christian the other day down in Franklin, Georgia. And he got to talking about the whys in life. Why things happen. Why this happened. Why happened. And I told him, and he was asking some pretty tough questions. He's a good Christian man. And I said, I do not know the answer to him, brother. But one thing I do know is that the just shall live by faith. Amen. That's the right. just shall live by faith. If you focus on the crazy things and the whys that happen in this world, you'll lose your mind, friend. You'll lose your mind trying to answer them. Answer them. 1 Corinthians 15, 26, it says, The last enemy, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Is death. The last enemy. Would you say it's an enemy this morning? Amen. It's a brutal enemy. There's no doubt about it. And in Revelations 20 and 14, it says, and this is when it happens. This is when death is over with. It says that death was cast into the lake of fire. But until then, my friend, we deal with death. We battle death. Death is a war. And I want to leave you with some scriptures from Revelation 21 and 1 through 5. And it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I saw John, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people. And God Himself will be with them and be their God. Verse 4. I like this verse. This verse helps me, friend. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Or oh, can you imagine? God Himself reaching down with that old tender hand and coming along your face and my face and taking, wiping them old teardrops out of my eyes. That don't make an old dead Baptist get happy, friend. Amen. Amen. And there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, and I want you to listen to this verse right here. It don't say I make some things new. Amen. I don't make part of the things new. It says, praise God, I make all things new. Amen. All things new, friend. I look forward to that day that He makes all things new. Them old broken homes, them old broken hearts. He's going to take them. He's going to fix them and repair them. But today, my friend, I want to ask you a question before I close. This, he told me ten minutes and that's it. He told me. Strict. But I want to leave you with this verse right here. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning, I want you to listen to this verse. I want you to listen to how tender this verse is. How God speaks to us. The last page of the Bible. Last page of the Bible, it says, and let it speak to you this morning if you're not saved. And the Spirit... And the bride, he said, come. And let him that hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. The invitation is there. The invitation. God's a loving God, friend. You hear me? And I like this verse right here. It says, and whoever, whosoever. There's a preaching out there that says that only so many are going to get into heaven. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible says right here, whoo! Whosoever will, whosoever will, friend, whosoever will, let him take freely of the waters of life. 
My prayer to you this morning, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, that today, today, will be that day of salvation for you. That when we stand here and do a memorial over you, there won't be any doubt where you're at, friend. I beg you at this morning. I love you and I thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, at this time, we'll remember the, the individuals who have passed away in the past two years. We will also remember two deceased uh, preacher's wives. Uh, the first individual we'll remember were, member, uh, were individuals buried in our cemetery that were not members of our church. First, we remember Mrs. Elsie Burgess Porter Bramlett, who passed away July 22, 2019. She was born December 30th, 1934, to Will Burgess and Cora Annabelle Nation. She married Fred Masden Porter in 1953, then moved to Cave Spring, Georgia in 1959. Fred passed away tragically on February 5th, 1961. She later married Webb Bramlett in 1965. He also preceded her in death on May 17th, 1985. She worked for one of the local doctors before finding her true calling as a house parent for the Georgia School of the Deaf from which she retired in 1998. She remained very active into her later years, and she loved to play golf, and was especially proud of making a hole in one at the age of 70. She was survived by two sons, Donnie Porter and his wife Hope, and Jimmy Porter and his wife Rita, who some of you may remember lived in Central Hatchie some years ago. And she also had one daughter, Marsha Porter Miller. We now remember her grandson, Jim Porter, who was taken from us much too soon on May 18th, 2020, at the age of 33. <laughs> he was born March 16th, 1987, to Jimmy and Rita Terry Porter. He attended our church from an early age, and he became one of Ferd County's outstanding students, was a star baseball player and the starting quarterback for the football team. He graduated in 2005. Then he attended West Georgia College before becoming a deputy sheriff for Heard County. He went on to his dream job with the Bowden Police Department, where he was part of the GBI West Metro Regional Drug Task Force. <laughs> and he had an infectious personality that endeared him to everyone. Uh, he was survived by his parents, his wife, the former Aaron Barr, three children, Gus Porter, Elsie Porter, and Sadie Porter, a sister, Vanessa Thornhill, and her husband, Josh, and a host of other relatives and many friends. And if you will, continue to be in prayer for this family, as not long after Jim passed away, his mother-in-law, er, uh, Meredith Barr, also passed away. So please be, please remember this family as you continue to pray uh, for everyone. We next remember Miss Patricia Ann Pringle Steele, who passed away November 1st, 2019. She was born December 4th, 1952, to David Pringle and Wanda Maud Tillis. She worked for M&M Trucking in Roanoke. She served as the president of the Roanoke Pilot Club and was active in their Christmas for Kids program. She was survived by her husband, Bob Steele, children, Ryan Drury, Amanda Steele, and Jennifer Wortham and her husband, Jeremy, and a number of grandchildren and a sister, Lee Mabry. She was preceded in death by her parents and a daughter-in-law, Jennifer Drury. Next, we remember Lee Tony, who passed away January 30th, 2020. He was born May 3rd, 1971, to Buck and Rudy and Tony, who preceded him in death. He loved to work on cars and trucks, and it was said that he lived and breathed mechanics and was skilled at his craft. Next, we remember Billy Holland Templeton, who passed away March 8th, 2020. He was affectionately known as Tim, and was born May 3rd, 1937, to William Edward Templeton and Marie Walker. He proudly served his nation in the Marine Corps and U.S. Navy. After serving in the military, he worked for Floor Daniel Construction. 
He was a lover and great student of history who was proud of his heritage and a life member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. He was also a great American who loved his country. He enjoyed riding motorcycles and working with wood, and he was survived by his wife, Melba Hyatt Templeton, son Rick Templeton and his wife, Leanne, grandchildren, Anna Caroline Templeton, Richard Holland Templeton II, Jackson Lane Templeton, Brandon Alexander Witcher, and Brittany Alexis Witcher, and three children from a previous marriage, Diane McCarter, Martha Stewart, and Billy Templeton. Next, we remember a husband and wife who passed away, and their remains were interred in our cemetery this year. Mr. Truman Castle was born March 5, 1933, and passed away August 26, 2017. He was the son of Judson Castle and Ida Irene Burson, and was survived by his son, Wade Castle, daughters, Kelly Grimm Castle and Melanie LaRue Castle, sister, Carol Ann Ray, and six grandchildren. And in addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by two brothers, Harold Quillen Castle and Gerald Castle. His wife, Christine Hannah Castle, passed, was born July 6, 1934, and passed away May 9, 2020. She was survived by one sister, Mrs. Doris Castle, and two daughters, Nancy Collier and Anita Shellnut, and her grandchildren, Javier Sanchez, Nicole Schrumpfer, Natalie Deal, and four great-grandchildren. She was preceded to death by her parents, Lillian Hannah and Bill Hannah, her husband, Truman Castle, brothers and sisters, Tommy Lou Broom, Edward Hannah, Thelma McSwain, Noreen Hughes, Louise Steed, Annis Bell, Lucille Eady, Betty Sanson, Jean Hannah, and Carl Hannah. Next, we remember Mrs. Tommy Lou Vaughn Steele, who passed away on August 10th, 2020. She was born February 21st, 1922, to James Henderson Vaughn and Mary Lee Bailey. Her husband, Isaiah, preceded her in death, and she lived as a widow for more than 43 years. She was one of the sweetest, uh, one of the sweetest ladies I knew and a true Christian. She was a member of Baptist Tabernacle in LaGrange. Her family meant everything to her, and she loved to have everyone at the house for a home-cooked meal, and she truly was the foundation of her family. The survivors include her children, Sandra Cornwell and her husband, Hugh, Thomas Steele and, her, and his wife, Angie, Elaine Nave and her husband, Eddie, Jack Steele and his wife, Joe, James Steele and Jennifer K. Steele, 16 grandchildren, 41 great-grandchildren, and 19 great-great-grandchildren. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by her husband, Isaiah Steele, children, Richard Scott Steele, Melinda Ann Steele, and Aliska Steele Baker, grandchildren, Shane Nave and Terry Baker Jr. and her siblings Mosley Vaughn, Pierce Vaughn, Quillen Vaughn, Pauline Adams, and Mary Steele, and a son-in-law Doyle Smith. Next we remember Dr. Gary Chambers who passed away August 17, 2020. He was born December 2, 1938 to Troy Chambers and Miss Isla Ely Chambers. He graduated from Mercer University and finished his medical degree at Bowman Gray School of Medicine in North Carolina. He specialized in orthopedic medicine and served the Air Force in that capacity in England from 1969 to 1972. Following his service, he went into private practice in North Carolina and Tennessee. He also served as a medical missionary in Kenya, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. His travels gave him material for his passion to part from medicine, which was painting. He made paintings depicting the scenes and people he saw throughout his travels as well as local locations that were special to him. He was survived by his children, Hope Chambers, Troy Chambers and his wife, Kathy, Leah Pizana and, his, and her husband, Tomas, grandchildren, Keegan Chambers, Taryn Chambers, Tomas Pizana III, and Miriam Pizana, one brother, Shelby Chambers, and in addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by a brother, the Reverend Zane Chambers, and a sister-in-law, Joan Chambers. Next, we remember Mr. Jeff Vaughn, who some of you uh, probably knew better as Junior Vaughn, who passed away on October 4th, 2020. He was born June 22nd, 1932, to Jephthah Amos Vaughn and Opal Turner. His mother passed away when he was seven and his father when he was nine years old, so he and his siblings were raised by the Turner family. Times were tough, but this built character and discipline for Junior, 
who felt the call to preach in his 20s. He was ordained in 1973 and served the churches he attended faithfully. He was a veteran of the U.S. Army who served during the Korean War and worked for the Trent Tube Company as a welder. He loved everyone, called them on special occasions, and always told them, I love you, but most of all, God loves you. He was survived by his daughter, Ruth Von Stapler, and her husband, Mike. All of his family meant the world to him, but Sam, Marty, and Chris held a special bond because Jeff and Lois raised them as their own. Nineteen grandchildren, 38 great-grandchildren, and 22 great-great-grandchildren, and his sister, Mrs. Elizabeth Ivey, and his brother, Charles Vaughn. He was preceded in death by both of his parents, his wife of 40 years, Lois Bates Cosper Vaughn, their children, William Wayne Cosper Jr., Jackie Marie Cosper Blair, and Dorothy M. Cosper Smith, grandchildren, Shane Cosper, Sherry Blair, Jody Stapler Thrower, and Tamantha Story, his sister, Ruth Vaughn, and two brothers, Robert Lee Vaughn and Harold Theo Vaughn. Next, we remember Randy Bussey, who passed away February 1, 2021. He was born April 24, 1956, to James Robert Bussey and Nina Mae Adams. He worked as a handyman and carpenter in the local area. He enjoyed tinkering with things, taking them apart, and putting them back together. He also liked to watch Western movies on the TV and enjoy the outdoors. He was survived by three daughters, Kimberly Davis and her husband Jacob, Casey Gosden and her husband Tate, and Joanna Thomason and her husband JJ. Seven grandchildren, Brooklyn Bussey, Haley Davis, Connor Rayburn, Eli Cosper, Jackson Gosden, James Thomason, and R.B. Thomason. Three sisters, Diane McCormick and her husband James, Susan Patterson and her husband Clyde, and Janice Smith and her husband Everett. Four brothers, Tillman Bussey and his wife Beth, Johnny Bussey, David Bussey, and Robbie Bussey and his wife Lana. In addition to her, his parents, he was preceded in death by his brother, Jan uh, Jerry Bussey. Our final non-member we will remember is Jane Adams Dean, who passed away on t April 27, 2021. She was born April 10, 1941, to Anne Adams and Body May Street. Among the jobs she worked through the years was house cleaning. She loved to spend time at the house visiting with anyone who would sit on the porch. Time with family was especially precious, and when she and her sister got together and told old stories, everyone had a good time reminiscing about the old days. She liked to cook dinner for everybody, and she was well known for fried chicken and biscuits. She was survived by four daughters, Donna Faye Smith, Teresa Brown and her husband David, Debbie Chadwick and her husband Steve, and Tammy Dean, one son, Mike Dean, and his wife, Karen, a number of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and a number of nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by her husband, Bobby Dean, a grandson, Lance Corporal Jonathan Smith, of whom she was especially proud, who was killed in action in Iraq. Seven sisters, Miss Nanda Bussey, Nenner Spradlin, Vautel Robinson, Will McCall Jackson, Vonnell Holtzclaw, Novel Smith and Bobby Jean McCown. And they always had this little rhyming thing where they would name off all the sisters. It was kind of odd. And then four brothers. There were Cheryl Adams, Ronnie Adams, and two infant brothers. We'll now remember the members of our church who were not interred in our cemetery. First, we remember Miss Nadine McLean, who passed away August 1st, 2019. She was born June 23rd, 1950, to Aubrey McLean Sr. and Essie McLean. She was a member of our church, an important part of our food ministry on Wednesday nights. She worked many different trades, but the most rewarding was as a caregiver for her family in their time of need. She was survived by her children, Jackie McKenzie and her friend Heath Parrott, Shane Falarka and Michael, and Chris Helton and his wife Cindy. Brothers, Aubrey McLean and his wife Gloria, Billy McLean and his wife Sharon, Raymond McLean and his wife Shirley, and David McLean, and a number of grandchildren and a special great-grandchild, Braden Massey. Next, we'll remember Mr. Billy Lee Richardson, who some of you may remember from some years ago, who passed away August 10th of 2019. He was born December 10th, 1958, and attended our church some years ago and was willing to help out when he was able. He was a sinner in need of a savior, just like the rest of us. 
Next, we remember Steve Dyer, who passed away tw February 21st, 2020. He was born November 11th, 1958, to Jewel Jr. Dyer and Rochelle Leola Waller. He owned his own logging business and was a great friend to many. He was adept at fixing things and loved to help others in a time of need. He was also an avid outdoorsman, but I'll always remember the few nights the church group got together to play trivia at local Rio on Thursday night. He was survived by his wife, Linda, two sons, Jason Dyer and his wife, Maddie, and Michael Dyer, grandchildren, Melissa Harris, Rachel Dyer, Sean Dyer, and Taylor Dyer, and a sister, Vicki Chapman, and her husband, Thomas. He was interred at Elam Baptist Church in Coweta County. Next, we remember Miss Doris Bell, who passed away on November 19th, 2020. She was born April 22nd, 1927, to Curtis Walker and Mary Shanninger. She was a, t a retired teacher's assistant for Carroll County Schools and was very active in our Vacation Bible School, WMU, and mission work. She was always busy doing something, whether it was painting or sewing or hospitality. With Mr. Jesse, she was active in the Rootful Historical Society and helped restore the old Roop House. One of her favorite things was traveling, and she and Mr. Jesse always looked forward to their yearly trip to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for the flying-in convention. She always made a pretty good co-pilot. She was interred in Rootville City Cemetery. Survivors include her husband of 73 years, Mr. Jesse Bell, daughter Kay Bell Arnold, son Don Bell and his wife Terry, grandchildren Tanya and Tanya Bree Love and her husband Paul, Jessica Peters and her husband John, and a number of great grandchildren. Besides her parents, she was preceded in death by a brother, Wendell Walker, two sisters, Joyce Moore and Carol Lee, and grandson, Curtis Bell. We will now remember the members of our church who were buried in our cemetery this year. First, Miss Joy Hyatt, who passed away November 7, 2019. She was born August 9, 1940, to Willie Joe Walston and Lyra Louise Shellnut. She was known in the year as one of our most talented artists. She also collected antiques and owned her own mercantile shop known as the Hayloft. She was an exhibitor for many years at Powers Crossroads Festival. She also taught fourth grade for many years at Central Hadgey Elementary School. It was a graduate of the University of West Georgia, where she earned her bachelor's, master's, and specialist degrees. She and her husband, Roger, farmed the local area and were known for having a huge crop of pumpkins each fall. She had a love of rocks and gemstones, and one of her prized possessions was a necklace with a purple amethyst mined from North Carolina. She was survived by two sons, Mart Hyatt and his wife, Stephanie, and Bert Hyatt and his wife, Susan, a granddaughter, Haley Hyatt, and his sister, Jenny Walston. She was preceded in death by her husband, Roger, a granddaughter, Courtney Kimberlin, and a sister, Judy McCullough. Next, we remember Kevin Shellnut, who passed away November 30th, 2019. He was born September 15th, 1978, to Elvis Carlton Shellnut and Holly Angelia Shellnut. He loved to work with his hands and helped his father in the auto shop. He also enjoyed working with wood and carpentry. He was a quiet man who endeared himself to everyone he met, and he had a kind of smile that would light up a room. He was survived by his father, Elvis, wife, April, and seven daughters, Laura Whitman and her husband, Nick, Caitlin Shellnut, Kaylee Shellnut, Jessa McQuain and Charlotte, Savannah Pruitt and her husband, Luke, Marissa McQuain and Alana McQuain, two grandchildren, Lucas Whitman and Sutton Pruitt and other relatives and friends. Next, we remember Mr. Jerry Cato, who passed away June 6, 2020. He was born September 9, 1933 in Perry, New York, to Charles Joseph Cato and Jenny Mary Patanella. He was self-employed in the janitorial business, and he moved south to take a supervisory role in the upkeep of Walt Disney World. He was a member of our church who rarely missed a Sunday, despite having his mobility problems. He was survived by two daughters, Georgia Ann Parker and Sherry Powers, three sons, Thomas Cato, Paul Cato, and Gary Cato, and a number of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. In addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by his son, Jimmy Cato. Next, we remember Mrs. Marguerite Summerlin, who passed away July 23, 2020. She was born September 28, 1927, to Charlie B. Young and Perry Potts. She worked in the textile industry for Bowden Bremen Investment Company. She dearly loved her large family and greatly enjoyed having them over for a home-cooked meal together. 
She liked to garden and was especially proud of her flowers. In her spare time, she also enjoyed reading and embroidery. She was survived by three daughters, Libby Curry and her husband Mark, Linda Atkins, and Lorraine Tovel and her husband Alan. Four sons, Tony Summerlin, Kenny Summerlin, and his wife Deborah, Mike Summerlin, and Alan Summerlin. And grandchildren, April Stafford, her husband Kirk, Sonia Gibson, her husband Ray, Jeff Summerlin, Nate Nelms, Brian Wynn, Tia Sellers, Chris Curry and his wife Heather, Katie, Christina, Jesse, Tyler, and Zach Atkins, Shane Cammon and his wife Danielle, Ronnie Cammon and his wife Miranda, Paige Drake and her husband Caleb, Brian Johnson and his wife Tricia and Paul Mammon, and a number of other relatives and friends. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by two sons, Ronnie and Phil Summerlin, and a grandson, Keith Summerlin. Next, we remember Mr. Gary Wright, who passed away July 30th, 2020. He was born April 29th, 1951, to Harvey Benjamin Wright and Mary Turner. He was an Army veteran and was employed by Bell South for more than 30 years. He dedicated every moment of free time to his family. He coached Shane's Little League teams and attended countless events Trina was involved in. When the grandchildren came along, he was always there cheering them on. He helped to found the Touchdown Club, which raises funds for the high school football team. And one of his passions was antique cars. And he enjoyed attending shows from around the South where he exhibited his own restored car. But above all, he loved his wife, Karen, to whom he was married 51 and a half years. In addition to Karen, he was survived by one daughter, Trina Wright Hanna, one son, Shane Wright, and his wife, Kim, five grandchildren, Colby, <coughs> excuse me, Colby Hanna, Colin Wright, Ty Hanna, Hanna Rose Wright, and Cassie Hanna, one sister, Miss Jean Duke, and her husband, Jerry, and an extended family of other relatives and many friends. In addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by two sisters, Carolyn Wright and Linda Whitley, and a brother, Gaines Wright. Next, we'll remember one of our former pastors who became a member of our church, Dr. Quinnon Duncan who passed away December 13th, 2019. He was born June 26, 1936, to John Dewey Duncan and Minnie Lee Crumley. After graduating high school, he married the love of his life, Roberta Leach. He was drafted into the Army, so he and Roberta moved to Rhode Island, where Quinnon worked as a technician for the Nike Missile Base. After serving his tour, he had seen enough snow, so he moved back to Georgia to work for the Department of Transportation. He announced his call to preach soon after high school, and he took classes through Luther Rice Seminary while working full-time. He finished his bachelor's degree while serving as the full-time pastor of Tyus Baptist Church. He went on to complete his master's degree and, in 1981, earned a doctor of ministry degree. He accepted the full-time pastorate at our church in the same year and served from 1981 until 1987. After leaving our church, he served at Antioch Baptist Church in Columbus, and then another student at Tyus Baptist before retiring from full-time ministry after serving New Lebanon Baptist Church. He returned to our church this time as a member, and he was our interim pastor until Brother Mark Williams came to our church. In addition to his beloved Miss Roberta, he was survived by sons Mike Duncan and his wife Sherry, Jeff Duncan and his wife Leanne, and Toby Duncan and his wife Tracy. He was also survived by special children he considered like his own, Lynn Mitchell and her husband Jimmy, Susan Bradley, Robin Rogers, and Richard Reeves, and there are also a number of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Our final deceased member we'll remember today is someone who simply cannot be replaced, and that is Ms. Irma Shellen, who passed away November 12, 2020. Certain people can be called cornerstones of the church and the community, and Ms. Irma Shellen was one of them. She was born April 10, 1929, to Henry Bryant Hyatt and Clara Ethel Ely. At an early age, she was stricken with polio, but she never let it keep her down. She, let, she earned two, uh, her two-year degree at West Georgia College before graduating from the Georgia Teachers College. She then went on to Auburn University, where she earned her master's degree. She taught the students of Central Hatchie for more than 30 years and served as principal for much of that time. She believed that every student was special and had the opportunity to learn. 
She was a stern but fair disciplinarian, and many still remember the paddle that hung in her office. After retirement, she managed Helen's Grocery with her husband, H.J., and after his death, she continued to run the store. Shell Nuts became the local spot for gossip, and the kids from the community came to play pool and the arcade games. Many precious memories were made, and customers became treasured friends. Miss Irma became a fixture at the store and rarely missed a day for many years. She attended our church every Sunday and taught the senior adult Sunday school class. She also served on numerous committees through the years, including the Benevolent Committee. A special place in our community and our hearts is empty, but we know that Miss Irma is whole again and celebrating with family and friends. She was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, H.J., a sister, Ethel Crockett Stevens, two brothers, Fred and J.L. Hyatt, a grandson, Jacob Lofton, and a great-granddaughter, Ava Grace Nelms. She was survived by her daughter, Miss Rita Lofton, and her husband, Chuck, a son, Hal Shellnut, seven grandchildren, John Nelms and his wife, Jennifer, Joe Lofton and his wife, Amy, Nicole Frith and her husband, Daniel, Joshua Lofton, Chelsea Johnson and her husband, Jacob, Jessica Ridgeway and her husband, Matt, and Chance Shellnut, and a number of great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and a host of students and friends. Finally, we will remember two of our pastor's wives who passed away this year. First, Miss Edna May Meadis Scott, who was the wife of our former pastor, Reverend Ralph Scott, who passed away July 2, 2019. She was born April 16, 1928, to George Alvin Meadows and Missouri Evelyn Robinson. She served our church from 1976 through 79. She was survived by daughters Carolyn Scott and her friend Frank Boozer, Gloria Murray and her husband Glenn, and Opal Walston and her husband Ricky, and a number of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Finally, we will remember Miss Frances Jackson, who passed away April 1, 2021. She was the wife of our former pastor, David Jackson. She was born October 11, 1941, to Reverend Charles Brennan Schultz and Bertha Ritchie Schultz. She served our church from 1979 through 1982. In addition to her husband, she was survived by her daughter, Keely Whitmer, and her husband, Nan. Sons, Chris Jackson and his wife, June, Eric Jackson and his wife, Amy, and Richie Jackson and his wife, Lisa. Six grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, and a sister, Regina Schultz. All 25 of these individuals made their own mark on, some, on our community. And let's continue to remember them as we go on through our lives. But as Scott said, we'll remember them for the good things. Thank you. You know, the thing uh, that I thought about why he was naming all those, boy, how our community has been impacted in the last two years. Every one of us sits across a table uh, looking at a seat where someone that we love dearly sits. But I'm reminded of another table. It's a table where we will one day sit in heaven and we will dine with the Lord and our loved ones. I don't know about you, but I long for that day. But I want to be faithful until that time that he takes me home. And I know that that's your desire, too. Thank you all for being here today. We're going to dismiss with prayer and go out. Uh, yes. I was going to give a quick cemetery report. Right quick. Sorry. Uh, the fund is doing rather well. We are almost to the $100,000 mark in the cemetery fund. So at this time, we'll take a quick offering. If you would please leave that offering. Which, uh, do we have an empty plate? Yeah, there's an empty plate okay. up there. If you want to do a donation to the cemetery fund, please make your check out to Central Hatchie Cemetery Fund, and you can drop it in the offering plate here in on the, the right. In the gold plate. In the gold plates. Gold plate. Mm -hmm. It's up at the front. Thank you. All right. So let's dismiss with a word of prayer, and I'm going to ask our Chairman Deacons, Brother Allen, if he would, to close us with a word of prayer.
Amen. Oh, and by the way, we'd love for y'all to stay for the 11 o'clock service. Uh, we're going to have lunch afterward, and uh, uh, we'd just love to have you here. There's plenty for everybody. You say, well, I didn't bring. I know you ladies are big on that bring. Well, nobody else brought either, so we're providing a lunch today, so we'd love for you to stay. And we'll be exiting out through this door over here. If you're going out to look at the cemetery or whatever, we exit out through this door. Thank you all for being here. God bless you.